James Franklin's contract. Is it worth it? Just so everybody's crystal clear, we're a great program. We lost to an elite program, and we're that close. We have gotten comfortable being great. We will no longer be comfortable being great. A couple weeks ago, Penn State announced that James Franklin will be extended for 10 more years as their head football coach. With Lincoln Riley going to USC, Brian Kelly going to LSU with his family. I'm here with my family. Brent Pry leaving the program to go to Virginia Tech to be the head coach there. There's been a lot of changes in the college football world, but one thing has stayed the same, and that's James Franklin's position at Penn State. He's already been at the head coaching spot for eight years. Now with those 10 more years included, he could be here until, what, 2031? That's insane to think about. So as the title of this video suggests, I wanna get into, is it worth it to keep James Franklin at Penn State for 10 more years? Is this contract, is it a fair contract? Is it good for Penn State? Is it good for James Franklin? Let's get into it. So for starters, I think keeping Franklin for the foreseeable future is the right move. How long, you ask? I would give it about three years, considering this recruiting class coming in is one of the top recruiting classes in the country. You have the number one quarterback in Drew Aller. You have the number one running back in Nick Singleton. Those two guys are the headline of a fantastic class reminiscent of 2018's class, which if you'll remember had Micah Parsons, who's tearing it up in the NFL for the Cowboys, unfortunately. But anyway, this class is legit and you wanna have stability at your head coaching position, especially when you lose your D coordinator in Brent Pry. Mike Yursich, the offensive coordinator, is in his first year, hopefully going to stay for at least another year because Penn State has had a lot of turnover. That's what I'm getting at here. Turnover in the coaching staff has been a problem and it, that basically is college football. That is what college football has been accustomed to. I know Sean Clifford gets a lot of flack and listen, his play has been up and down, inconsistent, but he's had to deal with three offensive coordinators in three years. And I'm not saying Sean Clifford's coming back for a sixth year, which would be just hilarious. But what I am saying is it contributes to sometimes a lack of consistency. Keeping Franklin under the helm for this recruiting class for the next couple years is the right move. Now, for the future, is that really where Penn State should go? I don't think so. But basically what happened was, the rumor was that Franklin was gonna go to either LSU or USC. Those are the two schools that everyone was saying, oh, Franklin may go to USC, may go to LSU. No way he was going to LSU, but USC was the big school that was talked about. Lincoln Riley comes out of nowhere and he takes the USC head coaching job. So I think, little conspiracy theory here, that James Franklin kind of leveraged the coaching carousel, kind of everything with going on, he kind of used that to his advantage and got even more years because there was up in the air if he was going to USC, if he was gonna stay, there was a lot of uncertainty with that. Now I know this was talked about with him and the Board of Trustees, like this deal was finalized a long time ago, but this was relevant in terms of this season. It's a smart move on Franklin's part in terms of staying where he wants to stay. Ultimately, when the James Franklin history, when the James Franklin legacy comes out, what are people going to talk about? He's got 10 more years to really set that in stone, to really finalize that. Maybe he'll have 10 more years after that, who knows? The other big thing that has been a problem with James Franklin and his tenure at Penn State, it's winning the big game. He's won a couple, he's had a couple signature wins, but he hasn't had enough, in my opinion, throughout eight years to warrant a 10 year extension. Penn State has had some good years. Like I said, they won the Big Ten Championship. They really should have been back in 2017, but they weren't because they lost two close games to Michigan State and Ohio State, which they did back to back years by slim margins, one score. They really honestly choked away those games and they could have had them. They had them in their palm of their hand and they didn't win. Penn State has only beaten Ohio State one time in eight years under James Franklin. They beat Michigan three times. So a combined record between the eight years under Franklin, they've been four and 12, which you can't say that you're top tier with Ohio State and Michigan and you only beat them four times in eight years. That just can't happen. It can happen. I know Ohio State has been leagues ahead of Penn State in terms of what they've developed in talent and recruiting, but now you don't have any excuses. You have none. 
You didn't have any in 2016, 2017. They won one out of those two years where they had a great team. And now you're back to that recruiting class. You, you're back to really that talent that you have. And there's no excuses now for them not being able to at least compete and win those games. So the point I really wanna make is Franklin hasn't won the big game consistently. He's won a few, but he hasn't won enough to warrant that extension, to warrant an extension at least that long. You have this great recruiting class coming in, but the worry is the coaching, the little things, winning the game in the last couple minutes. That's always been a problem for Franklin at Penn State, and I think it will continue to be a problem moving forward, unfortunately. So we'll see how these next couple years play out because I think this is gonna be interesting. If Penn State is kind of trending down in the seven and five, eight and four range, which, you know, eight and four is fine for some college programs, but it, it just doesn't, it's not gonna suffice for Penn State. Eight and four, seven and five, it's not gonna cut it anymore. But you have the name, you have the brand Penn State, and you're able to get these players in. And if you can't win the big game, then what are we doing? We'll see what happens. It'll be, like I said, interesting in the next year for Penn State football. I think it's a pivotal year. It really is because that's this first year really in this extension. And if Franklin can't get this team moving in the right direction, there's gonna be some noise already. I'm gonna tell you right now. So I'm gonna say this Franklin contract is not worth it. Penn State will face Arkansas in the Outback Bowl in Tampa on New Year's Day. We will probably have a video out for that after the game. Penn State loses, Penn State wins. Whatever the outcome of the game, I'll probably break it down. But that'll do it for me in this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new and want more content like this sports talk with Philly Sports Penn State. Let me know down below what you like. And as always, guys, I'll catch you on the next video. Appreciate the support as always. And I'm out. Peace out, everyone.